In the last lecture, we introduced the concept of distributions and described how we can define a Laplace transform for an arbitrary distribution. This involved defining the space that we call L and a collection of semi-norms on that space. We defined a Laplace transform on a distribution or generalized function as this action on a certain sequence, and this allowed us to show the delta function's Laplace transform was simply one. In order to address problems in linear systems theory, we need to also figure out what the Laplace transform does to derivatives and antiderivatives of functions and distributions. Moreover, we need to figure out exactly what those concepts are with respect to distributions. Once we have that, we can define the transfer function of a linear system, which is the Laplace transform of the impulse response, or rather, the Laplace transform of the solution to the system when you input a delta function. So distribution theory was one of the major discoveries of the 20th century, and the person who did this was Lawrence Schwartz. I was trying to see if I could find some tidbits that I could share with you guys. Then it turns out that he actually wrote an autobiography back in 1997. It was written in French, but in 2001, it was translated in English by Springer Berkhauser. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't seem like Springer itself actually sells a book anymore, and Amazon has it for 70 bucks, which seems to be kind of steep for a video that I'm making for YouTube. But at the very least, I was able to find another nearby library that had it. That's going to take maybe a week or so before it actually comes in. But I was able to find a couple of tidbits that I might be able to share with you. Suppose f is a differentiable function of exponential type with support in m to infinity. Moreover, suppose that the derivative is also of exponential type. Then if we look at the regular functional defined by the derivative of this function and act on a function from our space L, then we get the integral equation of the integral from negative infinity to infinity of f prime of t times phi of t dt. Since f has support in m to infinity, so does f prime. Hence, for some a less than m, we can write the integral as the integral from a to infinity of f prime of t times phi of t dt. Now let's use the integration by parts formula, and by doing so, we arrive at this formula. Since the support of f is m to infinity, that makes f of a zero. And the limit as t goes to infinity of f of t times phi of t is also zero, since phi of t is an L and f is of exponential growth. Thus, we have this. That is, if we take the regular functional corresponding to the derivative of f, then it may be expressed as the negative of a regular functional corresponding to f applied to the derivative of a function in L, which is still in L. So instead of defining a derivative of a regular distribution through differentiation of a symbol or its representing function, then we may define it through the negative of an application of the functional to the derivative of a function in L, which gives us a new functional. Now we can extend our definition of the derivative by analogy with regular distributions. So I found this one review in the AMS notices. It is an extraordinary instance of cerebral percolation that after such a trying period entirely taken up with problems of survival rather than mathematics, Schwartz should have come up with his ideas of distributions. That was around 1944 to 1945, around the end of World War II, which in one go cleared up the mystery of the heavy side function, renamed Dirac's delta function, and opened the way to the theory of Fourier transforms of tempered distributions. Schwartz's idea had all the simplicity and inevitableness one associates with work of the highest class. So I really can't wait to get a hold of the textbook so I can really dig into all this stuff. Apparently there's an entire chapter on distributions inside of his autobiography that we'll be able to like dig into. Now we can extend our definition of the derivative by analogy with regular distributions. Hence, we say for such a distribution t, the derivative of t is given as t prime of phi is equal to minus phi prime for all phi and l. So now let's see this definition in action and let's consider the heavy side function. You can think of this as the regular distribution corresponding to a piecewise defined function, where f is zero for all negative values and one for non-negative values. You can also think of this as the functional that sends phi to its integral from zero to infinity. We label this functional, or this distribution, as capital H. If we take the derivative of H, then that is the functional that sends phi to the negative of h applied to the derivative of phi. This is the negative of integration from zero to infinity of the derivative of phi. And since phi is a smooth function, this resolves itself through the fundamental theorem of calculus. And we know that the limit as phi goes to infinity is zero. Thus, we are left with phi of zero. 
That is, the derivative of the Heaviside function applied to phi gives us evaluation of phi at the origin, which is exactly what the delta function does. The Heaviside function will be important next time when we talk about convolutions of distributions. And the convolution of a distribution with the Heaviside function will be used to give us a definition for the antiderivative of a distribution. Now we can talk about the Laplace transform of derivatives of distributions. Recall that we define the Laplace transform of a distribution at a point s as the limit of its action on a sequence of functions converging to e to the minus st in some sense. Specifically, we take a function that is 1 from negative infinity to 1 and 0 from 2 to infinity. And we want this to be smooth between 1 and 2. And we create the sequence as gn of t is equal to phi of t over n times e to the minus st. Thus, for a distribution, t supported on some half line, the Laplace transform of the derivative of t at s is given as the limit n goes to infinity of t prime of gn, which is by definition minus t of gn prime. Now gn is expressed as a product of differentiable functions. We can use the product rule and we get this. t of negative 1 over n times phi prime of t divided by n times e to the minus st plus s times phi of t divided by n times e to the minus st. The inside of the first term goes to zero in L, which is a nice little exercise to go through. And by continuity, that whole first term then goes to zero. And the second term on the inside is gonna be gn. So that gives us s times t of gn. And the limit of that is s times the Laplace transform of t evaluated at s. There is one important distinction here where this differs from the Laplace transform of a function, where the Laplace transform of a derivative of a function is s times capital F of s minus f at zero. The evaluation of a distribution at a particular point has no meaning. And in fact, the term is dissolved through that term that goes to zero here. This took me a lot more head scratching than I'd like to admit. So while I was looking for the book, I found a couple more tidbits about his discovery of distributions. And Lawrence Schwartz says that he actually came up with the idea in one evening where everything fell together all at once. And, and something that's interesting is that the theory of distributions had generally received two criticisms. One was that it was way too simple to ever be useful. And the other was that it is way too complicated to ever be useful. And I think that's really amusing, especially the fact that he ended up getting a Fields Medal for this. Now we can define the transfer function, which is a Laplace transform of the impulse response function, where we take all the initial conditions to be zero. Take a linear differential equation, in this case of one variable, given as so. U is our input function, and ultimately we will call that our controller. What we place in there instead is the delta function. And each time we have the derivatives of the delta function, we're gonna replace that with a power of s, corresponding to the order of the derivative, where when we have no derivatives at all, we just get the Laplace transform of delta function as one. The response of the system to an impulse is usually denoted by little h. So we will replace x with h. And we'll write its Laplace transform as capital H of s, where we are careful not to confuse that with the heavy side distribution. We give it the same s treatment where we convert all the derivatives to multiples of s. Now, all we need to do is solve for h of s, and that gives us our transfer function. And so that's where we wanted to get to today. All right, so thank you for sticking through this with me. So if you really like this video, please go and boop the like button so it can get out to more people. And otherwise, I hope you guys have a great day.